maiden voyage of Tabletop Tuesdays with me, your host, Clint Bodungeon from Threat Gen. And we are going to be using Auto Tabletop for the first time, the world's first live IR Tabletop. We have a group of participants and uh, panelists that are going to help us here. Let's go ahead and bring them in one by one or all at once. <laughs> Oh, not sorry. <laughs> we brought brought in uh, one too many there. So, all right. Right so, over. Um, all of our other panelists, uh, if you're coming in now, our panel is full for right now. If anybody has to drop, then we'll get you in so you can be on standby. Otherwise, um, you know, there's opportunities. We do these once a week, so there'll be opportunities. So, hi everybody. If you want to introduce yourself real quick, uh, our our panelists are. This is this is our I, IR team for our exercise here we'll start with you peter you want to introduce yourself real quick yeah peter lake from melbourne australia um i'm a cyber security uh, consultant and an esports ctf team coach very cool mike uh my name is mike Holcomb. i uh post a lot on linkedin about uh icsot cyber security <laughs> and uh my day job i actually uh work in uh, IT and ICSOT cybersecurity for uh, Floor. So. And Aaron. Awesome. Uh, Aaron Crow. Uh, I'm actually a podcast host. I uh, speak about I IT and OT and cybersecurity stuff. I also do uh, I have worked in the industry for 25 plus years in IT and OT. Actually, Mike and I, have uh, Mike's been on my podcast before and so have you, Clint. So uh, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for, thanks for allowing me to be here. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, cool. I'm, I'm, I see uh, we have some people joining us and uh, in chat. And then we have, we have another Australian out there in chat and some other uh, folks that I think we're looking forward to seeing this. And if someone would please copy and paste that in the private chat for the people that uh, joined in the background there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. So what are we doing today? So today's IR tabletop exercise with auto tabletop is going to be a little bit different from a regular tabletop. I know normally the tabletops would be kind of based on some sort of specific OT infrastructure, IT infrastructure, and a bit more realistic. Here, we're going to keep the technology as realistic as possible. We're going to stay true to the IR tabletop procedures, but we're going to be using the capabilities of auto tabletop to be able to instantly generate and dynamically generate all of the details for this theme which if you haven't guessed it already and if you haven't re if you haven't read my post which is we're going to be the empire we're defending the death star from a rebel alliance cyber attack on the death star and there are going to be and you know what the music's a little annoying to me what about anybody else i'm gonna turn the music off yeah, it's just, yeah, let's just, yeah, let's turn the music off. All right, there we go. Ah, oh, that's better. Because we want to be able to hear because Auto Tabletop will talk to us. So let's go ahead and get this started. Let's go ahead and bring in Auto Tabletop. Hi, Auto Tabletop. Let's go ahead and turn off our uh, our labels now that we've introduced. We'll bring those back up later. Um, let's go ahead and, this should be already configured. So now <clears throat> the voice narration that auto tabletop does. This is not our exercise, by the way, this is an older one. Uh, we're gonna start a new one. The voice narration, if everyone, um, you may hear double talk because I'm using my system audio. So those, the participants here just don't say anything until the voice narration is done. We are going to have to, um, we're gonna have to wait. There is a bit delay in because of the stream. So on these long, when the generation's a little bit long, it may take a little bit, but that's okay. It's all in fun and you'll see. So we're going to go ahead and all we're going to do is just simply click start new exercise. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. All right. So it's configuring the tabletop. It'll pop up with our initial scenario real quick. There we go. All right, give it a few seconds to generate the audio. It won't be this long every time. <laughs> Come on. 
The first one always takes Introduction. Place. Welcome to today's incident response tabletop exercise. As your facilitator, I'm here as a brigade commander on board the Death Star. You have been summoned here as a specialized cybersecurity unit of the Empire to address a critical issue. Your role is to handle this situation as you would under real-world combat pressure. Deliberate, decide, and take action as a unified force. Take time to confer amongst yourselves, for the fate of the Empire may well rest upon your decisions. If in dire need you may seek my counsel, let us proceed with utmost vigilance and efficiency. Setting the stage. You are now standing within the metallic, intimidating expanse of the Death Star's command center. As a strategic cybersecurity team, your expertise has been sought after to maintain the domination of the Empire's technological prowess. Your IT staff, seasoned in the ways of Imperial systems, stands ready. Your cybersecurity staff, the silent saviors of our infrastructure, are vigilant and prepared. The environment in which you operate is vast, intricate, interlinked. A maze of terminals, servers, and computational might stretching as far as the galaxy. Scenario. Our monitors flickered with a portent of ill omen. Several critical system functions have begun malfunctioning throughout the Death Star. Communications are intermittent, navigation data is becoming unreliable, and there has been a 7.8% reduction in efficiency in our turbo laser recharge rates. Our initial diagnostics failed to pinpoint any mechanical issues, leading us to believe that this may indeed be the underhanded work of the Rebel Alliance. Their interference with our majestic fleet cannot and will not be tolerated. The clock is ticking, and your mission is clear. Identify, assess, and neutralize this threat with swift precision. The fate of the Empire is in your hands. Initiate your first course of action. All right. So, by the way, that was all 100% completely automatically generated, uh, both the text and the and the audio. And I don't, I have, I did not configure the 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 exact scenario. It's automatically generated. So even I'm a participant. Even I don't know what's going on. So, gents, and, and I, we we can um, we can even hear. Uh, I mean, we're not here, but we. I would like to hear via chat from the audience as well if we want to. But um, guys, what do you think? What's the first step? Go it's, a it. trap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. Had to get a Star Wars joke in. Um, I'm sure Alex, a... Alex is asking Anymore. whether this is the first Death Star or the second one. Actually, so... if you look at the, uh, I, can't, I can't move this out of the way real quick. If you just kind of go, well, um, it, it's the 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 picture in the background is actually the return of the is the the Death Star. Uh, in the Return of the Jedi being rebuilt. So, but I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> all right. So, it does. Um, all right. So, basically, it's telling us, you know, there's, and we can ask it any questions. There's no limits here. This is completely unlimited. Nothing is pre scripted. There are no pre scripted injects. It is completely dynamic. Um, you can ask it anything. So, and you can tell it, we can tell it we're going to do anything. So, um, so it's communicate. So we're basically we have monitors flickering. Uh, several several critical system functions have begun malfunctioning. Communications are intermittent. Navigation. Um, so I guess maybe we should ask. Uh, so initial diagnostics failed to pinpoint mechanical issues. Um, maybe we should ask specifically uh, which systems are malfunctioning. Yep. Sure. And when did they start? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, which systems specifically are um, malfunctioning, and when did it uh, start? All right, I think we'll go with that, right? Sure. All right. I like from the audience. There was a is there jam on the screens? <laughs> space space balls reference. Close, close enough. Yep. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> I think one of the depreciated things is the recharging of the um, what was that? The turbo laser. The recharging of uh, the turbo lasers. Yeah. So we might look at what the supply um, circuitry looks like for that. That might, that might be another. Oh, here we go. Um, thing as well. The malfunctions are widespread and seem to have a pattern targeting strategic subsystems. 
As of now, the affected areas include 1. Communications. Holonet transceivers are experiencing intermittent blackouts, which impede our capability to issue orders and receive intel reports. 2. Navigation. The navigational auxiliary system's guidance data has been corrupted, causing erratic path plotting for the TI fighter squadrons during launch protocols. 3. Weaponry. The turbo laser recharge rates are suboptimal, which could be exploited by the enemy during an assault. The onset of these anomalies was detected approximately at 0600 hours this morning, galactic standard time. The systems initially exhibited minor glitches that escalated into their current state of disarray. Your task now is to determine the extent of these issues and ascertain if they are indeed born of enemy actions. What will be your team's first move to confront these challenges? Yeah, I think... Um... Guys, what do you suggest? I, I uh, ah, see. Oh, wait. Alex has a question. Uh, is Lord Vader available to assist? Okay. Well, you know what? Let's ask. The, the, the audience wants to know if Lord Vader is available. Is Lord Vader available to assist during this? Uh, you know, incursion. Let's see what they say. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Lord Vader, the enforcer of our Emperor's will, is currently off station, attending to operations of the utmost importance. His presence is not to be expected, and he's not available to provide assistance or guidance at this time. You have the full authority and expertise necessary to proceed without his intervention. Let us not falter in his absence. Our enemies will find no weakness to exploit here. Now command your unit. What are your initial response actions? Well, I think they are. I think it's getting weakness, impatient with us. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Mike? I so, yeah, I think they actually did find a weakness to exploit here. So. <laughs> yep. I think we should review the logs. Review the logs and look for changes. Yeah, you look at one at a time, like for the uh, the hollow net transceivers. And where was the first first change noticed? Which system? Yeah, that'd be very cool if it does like baseline analysis and looks over time to see for changes. What's the delta? Yeah. Yeah, so right. good Kepner Trago techniques and um, troubleshooting would be, you know, what's different to the normal. And often when you have in your seam and your sock, you'll, you'll be looking what the baseline behavior is and what the behavioral indicator of compromise is different to that. Yep. All right. So do you want to go add that in there? Um, you know, what are the specific... Um, Anomalies, um, the uh, baseline behavior, right? All right, so let's review the logs. Look at any specific changes for clues. Uh, what was the first change and what is the delta between changes? What are the specific anomalies uh, from the baseline behavior? Okay. All right, going with that one? Yeah. Sure. All right. <clears throat> it's probably generating a nice long <laughs> answer for us yeah we gave it some some pretty hard questions there we did ask yep. a lot <laughs> all right uh this is gonna be a pretty long generation here uh we'll see what it says i, I like it when it talks to us uh more so than all right so this is what it's gonna say here and um we'll let the that's that's longer than the first initial generation um mm -hmm. We uh, were cybersecurity specialists to delve into the logs. They begin a thorough forensic analysis. Utilizing the sophisticated monitoring systems of the Death Star, your team hones in on the first abnormalities recorded. Initial findings. One, in the communications logs, 
Transceivers show unscheduled and unauthorized connection attempts. The encoding of these attempts does not match standard Imperial cryptographic protocols, hinting at an external origin. The first such attempt was logged just milliseconds before the blackouts began. 2. The navigation system's logs reveal unauthorized modifications to the system's core algorithm. These modifications occurred in a staggered pattern, starting with peripheral calculations, then moving rapidly toward the central guidance matrix. The delta between changes averages at approximately 2.5 minutes. 3. For the weaponry systems. Specifically the turbo laser subsystems, the logs show a gradual decrease in power output calibration settings. These settings deviated from the baseline by a few percentage points at first, but accumulated over several adjustments to their present state. Curiously, each decrement is timestamped exactly three minutes apart. Specific anomalies from baseline behavior. The communications interruptions are particularly precise, temporally spaced, and show an unusual method of waveform scrambling, not typical of our technology. The navigational inconsistencies are not a result of random data corruption, but rather precise, calculated insertions of false data strings. The turbo laser power draw adjustments were executed without triggering the security override designed to alert the weapon technicians, a notable deviation from protocol and system design. This orchestrated cascade of minute but cumulative alterations appears to be a concerted effort to weaken our station's functionalities gradually, typical of rebel sabotage methods. Your team has gleaned valuable insights into the nature of this subterfuge. What will be your next directive to contain and counter this insidious threat? So, this is this is like Death Star control systems here. I mean, this mm -hmm. is this is Death Star OT, um, which, as a result, uh, means that um, I don't think that we should be taking systems offline unless there's backup systems. We need to check to see if there's. Uh, hot standby systems if we're going to take anything offline and what sort of uh, issues can arise. And by the way, um, normally in a tabletop exercise, we'd be having, you know, we'd have a Nate, we'd have a, a note taker and, you know, you know, we'd be taking notes and all stuff like that. But this one's a little more entertainment. So uh, it's less official. So what do you guys think? I, I, th I, to me, because they're very specifically spaced, it seems automated. Yep. I mean, my, so my I, first response would probably be to see if we have a response team that can go out and look at the the the, the power system for the turbo laser, um, and and respond to that. Yeah. So we'll 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 uh, yeah. send. And it's saying that um, they're gradually being degraded. So Correct. maybe if we restored the settings to what they were Correct. at the last, and lock it days. out so they can't go back, and then. Then lock That's admin right. access to it. Correct. That's the well, and we have. <laughs> we can, you know, the turbo laser system. We're not using that right now, so we could take that one offline, right? No, because we expect that if they're doing that, why? What is the the intention, uh, right? Because maybe so uh, they like they're want, trying to prepare what they for want attack. The, so they want our turbo lasers. They're in hyperspace, heading for us right now. Correct. They're, yeah, they're it's true. To we, have well, it out of the, service. But the turbo laser system. Uh, that's the planet destroyer though right i mean that's that that is not a weapon that we use to to destroy like um i like i said tie fighters or whatever they didn't know tie yeah. fighters but yeah. that's not a system that we use for defense of the um of the yeah but what are there uh, there may be other dependencies upon that power system uh for other control systems that that could be using that power system to to okay you could check, check with this? the engineers <laughs> yeah there you go. Good um, <laughs> since we aren't um, <laughs> destroying any planets <laughs> uh, <laughs> right now, um, if we me. were to take the uh, turbo laser offline to isolate it, um, would that cause any other uh, ancillary? Uh, I can't spell ancillary um, outages. I'll figure it out. Yeah, you, you can misspell things. Um, what about for... The, the other thing would be 
the other thing would be to um, um, use some sort of list to block the unidentified um, um, connections. So trying to isolate because we're trying to contain and isolate here. So we don't want any more. Yeah. Um, so um, basically, can so we access control list to uh, um, identify blacklist the um, yeah. and blacklist um, the suspicious uh, external source and reset the um, transceiver signal to get get that back up and going because communications are down. Yeah. Or not down, but intermittent. I, sp I can't even spell transceiver. I, I'm i telling you, I cannot spell. <laughs> and then we could even consider taking off all external communication temporarily if it's not going to uh, cause any other issues. Yep. Um, okay, yeah, so, so let's... All off. Temporarily block all external communications. Okay, um, and then we have the but now we have the navigational inconsistencies. Um, let's um, let's send engineers to the nav systems to see if there is anything we can uh, do to. Um, a bypass or um, I, 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 bypass. Uh, which of these systems have backups um, on standby? Let's see. Let, um, have a lot of questions there. Yeah, it, it'll it'll be fine. Um, have uh, let's see, hot standbys. All right, let's just go with this for now. That's going to be a lot. It's going to generate a lot, a lot here. Yeah, I mean, there's other things. Just while I was like thinking, just while I was thinking, Clint, the, the wind condition here is 25 rounds. Is that right? Uh, no, this one's not 25 rounds. This one, I think, is just whatever. We'll just go until, you know, we'll, about an hour or so total, and we'll see. We'll win regardless. All right. Let's see here. All right. Man, look at that. All right. let right. Uh, it should be reading it here pretty soon. We're working on the latency, but for now, yeah, we'll just – it's fun to hear it talk, though, so – it was a good voice fit. Yeah, it is, especially for the, the Death Star. <laughs> Leadership sets the team into motion with the following actions. Turbo laser isolation. The turbo laser system can be taken offline without impacting other mission critical systems. The power grid is designed to reroute and compensate for any deficits. There will be no ancillary outages. The turbo laser system is thus isolated for further analysis. Blacklisting the external source. Working on identifying the external connection attempts, your cybersecurity specialists analyze the patterns and encryptions used. They are able to generate a profile for the suspicious activity and add the corresponding signatures to the blacklist, thereby blocking any further attempts from this specific source. Transceiver. Reset. The transceiver is reset, which seems to stabilize the communications briefly. However, the issue persists, suggesting that the root cause might be a persistent threat mechanism rather than a simple configuration aberration. Block external communications. As a precautionary measure, all external communications are temporarily halted. This should prevent any new unauthorized access, but it also means you cannot send or receive signals outside of the Death Star. Navigation systems. Engineers dispatched to the navigation systems find several unauthorized data scripts. Working swiftly, they are able to create and deploy a hot fix to bypass the corrupted guidance matrix. Their quick thinking restores partial functionality to the navigation systems while they work on excising all traces of the malware. Hot standby systems. 
The Death Star is equipped with hot standby systems for communications and navigation. They can be activated to take over the primary system's roles in the event of failure or sabotage. Activating these standby systems could provide immediate relief to the identified problems, giving your team more time to work on eradicating the threat from the primary systems. Would you like to proceed with activating the hot standby systems for communications and navigation? Are there any other measures you wish to employ at this juncture? I think before we activate, we should confirm that everything, there hasn't been any unauthorized changes to that system as well. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, some, so can any traffic, whitelist, be compiled with them? Um, all right. So, yeah. So um, let's... In the chat, Gregor's saying the log should show um, uh, information before the issue. So whether, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just following up there. Let's see. Okay, let's do this. So let's verify... Um, the um, integrity Stand of the you know, standby systems to be sure they haven't been uh, corrupted. If they seem fine, we will proceed with uh, switching to the standbys. Um, I guess then we need to begin uh, investigating the uh, corrupted systems to, and then this is a high level uh, exercise, by the way, I set the difficulty to be pretty easy and pretty high level so that it doesn't like take us, you know, more than an hour or so. So it'll make a lot of assumptions and it'll do a lot of things for us. We're not going to have to go through and tell it every single detail, but we could set it that way in the future. All right, so uh, investigate the corrupt systems um, to see if we can identify um, the type of malware, um, initial root calls, and uh, entry point. Yeah, and we also have that persistent mechanism sitting on the transceiver. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we also need to send out um, a ship wide. We can't. We have comms. Well, no, we, we have internal communications, right? Internal. Yeah, internal. Uh, okay. Ship wide um, um, announcement to let. Um, Reset your passwords right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> no, um, we are going to have a, um, a short systems and comms uh, outage for a scheduled exercise. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, now, and, just um, from the comments in um, in the feed, uh, Gregor is saying. Should we also check for any cron jobs that, and auto start tasks? So some of those systems that we reset degraded again. So maybe there's some auto start. Yeah. So it's a great suggestion there from Gregor. Yep. Let's pay particular attention to any uh, potential uh, persistence mechanisms. There also may be... A, a, in addition to that shipwide announcement to let everyone know who's going to have short systems, we may want to notify them that there may be some malicious activity and to be cautious for things that are there look uh, suspicious. Um, not, to, yeah. not to share any information if you get a call from a reporter. Yeah, actually, <laughs> right. um, we will. When Fox News about, calls. <laughs> how about separately um, contact all. Um, emergency response personnel. Uh, uh, well, we kind of are that, I guess. All department uh, heads to yeah. um, to have them brief their uh, uh, personnel uh, to be on the uh, lookout, change passwords, and be. 
Okay, let's go with that for now. Because I can't spell vigilance. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It, 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 it knows I'm a crappy speller. <laughs> <clears throat> so don't I, click on Order 66. Yeah, don't click. <laughs> Executive Order 66. Um, yeah, one of the things um, that... You know, we, we can like if we were doing a more detailed exercise, we can actually have it show us log output. Right. That Which we could. Cool. You know what? I'm gonna have it do that in a minute. I'm gonna have it show us uh the navigational system. Which 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 was the system that uh which system it was the comms, I guess. The comms seemed to be the entry point. But the comms had the like seem to have the persistence mechanism, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, the the transceiver. Yeah, the transceiver. We didn't. We haven't addressed the transceiver yet. So, we'll need to do that. This the cybersecurity team proceeds to audit the standby systems for signs of tampering or corruption using integrity checks and comparing the current configurations and data signatures against known secure baselines. The standby systems are found to be untouched by the incursion, their integrity intact. With confirmation that the standby systems are uncompromised, your team carries out a controlled switchover. Communications are rerouted to the standby system, and navigation control transfers smoothly. There's a brief dip in operational capacity as the shift takes place, but systems are now stabilized on secure backups. In the meantime, the investigation into the corrupted primary systems begins. Cybersecurity specialists start dissecting the malware, tracing the sequence of alterations back to the initial breach point. The focus is on uncovering any persistence mechanisms that would allow the malware to survive resets and propagate. They are also trying to deduce the malware's type, entry point, and purpose, whether it was meant for espionage, disruption, or as a prelude to a more invasive attack. Concurrently, a ship-wide announcement via the internal PA system is given. An excuse of a scheduled systems exercise is used to avoid panic and maintain operational secrecy, advising of the impending outage. Your message is carefully worded to avoid any sign of concern. Department heads are discreetly informed via secure comms of the actual situation, so they can brief their personnel accordingly. They are tasked with overseeing heightened vigilance in their sectors, demanding all staff to change their passwords to a more stringent encrypted standard. They're also instructed to keep watch for any anomalies and report immediately. With these actions taken, communications have been secured via the standby system. Navigation has been stabilized, providing accurate guidance data. Primary systems are being forensically analyzed for the root cause, entry point and type of malware with a special focus on uncovering any persistence mechanism. Personnel across the Death Star are alerted indirectly and instructed to take additional security measures. With your team carrying out your multifaceted plan, you wait for the results of these investigative and preventive measures. What is your next move, Commander? So what I think is interesting is all I did was put it in parentheses and said, we're just going to say it was due to, uh, and the outage is due to a planned exercise. And it understood my inference. It understood yeah, what I was right. getting at in my intent, which was really cool. Yeah, that was really cool and funny at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I mean, at this point, I think that we should check now that everything seems to be operating normally. I think that we need to also check to see if there's any other suspicious activity, any signs of continued, you know, lateral movement, any of that sort of thing. What do you think? And Greg Austin or Greg says to uh, install Windows Defender on all systems to prevent future uh, 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 breaches. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I don't know if uh, the Galactic Empire has. I mean, I think they're, I would, I think they're a Linux they shop. Their, yeah, they have their, yeah. Their E5 license. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see them more as a Kali Linux user. That's just my my feelings on it. But um, well, you know what? Um, do we uh, do we want to send out the uh, the troopers to uh, see if there's any unauthorized personnel on the uh, on the Death Star as well? 
Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Uh, start looking for physical personnel because obviously um, we want to make sure that there's nobody there that's going to uh, go back and and, un and undo some of the things that we've already fixed. You know those rebels, man. There's always somebody sneaking on to yep. the ship. So. Look for Jedi. Yeah, and in critical infrastructure, it's not only technological and IT, it's not only personnel, but it's also physical security. So I think... I'm all for a uh, squadron of TIE fighters to establish an external perimeter. <laughs> right. right. So let's send out stormtroopers to uh, to comb uh, yep, through the station uh, looking for any uh, evidence of uh, physical intrusion. Um, and then TIE uh, fighters send squadron. out uh, TIE fighters. In. Uh, to looking. establish yep. um, a perimeter uh, and look for a patrol um, and uh, perimeter around the station. Yeah, because yeah, we now have regained control of the nav system. <laughs> Double check the trash compactors. <laughs> and comb through the Double desert. Double check so that's where the trash compact <laughs> that's that's where we send the rebels once we find them <laughs> uh stowaway is that you supposed to stow away rebels all right mm. let's check this all right just i'm <laughs> <laughs> it's greatness i appreciate this is gonna uh, be good uh, input because this is this is fun yeah, but it really shows awesome. the price hour of this to to do this on, on the fly. Do what? I said it really just shows the power of this and and doing this oh, on the yeah. fly and how it's how it's able to. Yeah, we can swap scenarios out instantly. Hey, yeah, with the details and yeah, yeah, you can configure scenarios in seconds and swap them out instantly. Yeah, do Dune Part Two. <laughs> All right. Oh, I didn't actually do the. So it has the ability to do. Uh, yeah. So it can actually show you real log output with like a black screen and green. It will do that. But I think because this is a fictional. Right. As emulating or simulating computer systems and interfaces is outside of my capabilities. However, I can describe the log contents and findings in detail. The cybersecurity team provides a report based on the navigation system logs and the anomalies recorded therein. One, numerous unauthorized configurations changes initiated by a user with seemingly elevated privileges. For example, from log 060248, warning. Unauthorized change to nav algorithm parameters by user ID 0xA23E, possible security breach. From log no 60513, Error. Alert. Guidance checks some mismatch. Manual override detected at entry node Proxima 3. 2. A consistent pattern of malicious code injections designed to create small navigational errors that compound over time. From log 60731. Critical. Navigational computation drift exceeds allowable tolerance. Injected data hash 00-5C3F7B. Malware suspected. 3. Attempts to access the navigation system from unrecognized devices within the Death Star. From log 060855, alert. Insecure access attempt from unauthorized hardware signature CE778AX. Security protocols engaged. Acting on your directives, stormtroopers are dispatched to systematically search the Death Star from top to bottom. Prominent attention is given to service corridors, maintenance hatchways, and any other potential hiding places like the dreaded trash compactors. Every corner is to be scrutinized for signs of intrusion. No access panel or ventilation shaft is to go unchecked. Additionally, a squadron of TI fighters is deployed to form a perimeter around the station. They will patrol the area, keeping watch for any unauthorized ships, escape pods, or possible sabotage devices that may be attached to the hull's exterior. With the station on alert and these precautionary measures in place, the team awaits reports from both the stormtroopers' search and the log analysis to understand the full picture of the intrusion.
Your proactive strategy is designed not only to find and eliminate the immediate threat, but also to ensure no rebels are hiding aboard the station, preparing for further sabotage. Are there any other orders or areas you wish to address, Commander? <coughs> um, somebody, uh, Alex says, you know, the power of this fully operational tabletop facilitation platform. <laughs> um, yeah. Love it. So should we disable those user accounts? And, 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 and user account. also look for that hardware, the CE778X. Yeah, that, there's that uh, node uh, node three we saw earlier as well. Yep. And then we can try to track down where that uh, injected data ha is coming from. Yeah, so we have um, security breach. Okay, guidance check some mismatch. The the one I think uh, is this one, right? You know, the hardware signature, right? Yep. Track down. Um, Hardware CE seventy seven eight X. Right. Dis Anything else? I disabled. And by the way, account. it will show logs uh, like in a regular tabletop, not fiction. Right. Uh, it'll actually show uh, log output or whatever. So, uh, I mean, I did a Star Trek themed one, and it showed like um, the warp drive failures and log output. So. <laughs> very cool be kind of cool it gets to the point where it could actually generate like pcaps for you so then you can import them into wireshark and do analysis that way yep um actually so we have the cape so some of the capabilities that are coming online in the next couple weeks are it, it can actually you can actually upload uh network diagrams and it'll build a scenario off the network diagram to oh, down the last detail cool. and yeah you can have it generate pcap files and stuff like that just tons of features done it not implemented yet um so we had uh not David said, could we view security footage uh, in that sector to see who installed the hardware? That's a good idea. It was Aaron Crow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's another physical security measure. Right? Yeah. That malicious insider. That guy's known to be a problem. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with that for now. See what that gives us. It hasn't given us an inject yet. And I'm it, when it gets quiet, that's when I start to worry. You know, based on, man, a lot of good stuff. No, no inject yet. So we'll see. If it gives us an inject, I mean, it, it may not end up giving an, inj an inject, depending if it's, if it's a short exercise, it may not always give us uh, an sure. inject. So kind of get to a point where it's. Yeah. All right. All right. Come on, buddy. Relayed with precision. User account disabling. The cybersecurity team begins disabling all user accounts that demonstrate anomalies based on log outputs. They quickly revoke access privileges for user ID, OXA23E, and others flagged with unauthorized activity. A trace is initiated to track the real identity behind these accounts and their physical access points within the Death Star. Our hardware tracking. Technical staff are deployed to trace the origins of the unauthorized hardware signature CE-707 ATEX. Using network scanners and signal triangulation, engineers narrow down the location of the device to a secluded sector within the Death Star's tertiary service area. Security footage review. The security team reviews hollow recordings from the timeframes around the suspicious access attempts. They focus on cameras near network access points, particularly in areas where the compromised hardware might be located. A facial recognition sweep is initiated to identify individuals in the recordings who aren't part of the regular maintenance crew or authorized personnel. As the investigation unfolds, a small, nondescript remote access device is discovered attached to a secondary data terminal deep in the tertiary service area. It appears to be the source of hardware signature CE7 Tetensidin 8X. 
This device is confiscated for further analysis by your cybersecurity experts. It might contain vital clues about the saboteur's methods and origin. Security footage reveals a handful of individuals dressed as maintenance workers who do not match any Imperial staff records. These individuals are seen in the vicinity of network access points, carrying toolkits that could easily house hacking devices. Their current whereabouts are unknown, which heightens the urgency of the stormtroopers' ship-wide search. Initial identification efforts are hindered by sudden flashing alarms. Reports flood in from the stormtrooper squads, signs of a struggle in the main hangar bay. Someone attempted to steal a TIE fighter, but was thwarted. They left behind tools that could be used for sabotage, indicating that the rebels may still be on board. Your fast actions are narrowing down the elements at play. The hunt evolves from digital shadows to physical form as you close in on the external threat. The tightening grip of Imperial security is palpable throughout the station. The time to strategize your final moves is upon you. What will be your next command? So there was our inject. Yeah. Okay, this just got exciting. Uh, real quick, you guys, I can hear you in my ear. You talk it over. I've, the reason I left, my my dog wants out. I got to let my dog out before she causes a problem. Um, and so <laughs> you, I can hear you discuss it. And then as soon as I do like 30 seconds, um, we'll uh, discuss what we should do next or sure. we'll implement it. Well, right. a hat tip to We've David never... there. Not David. That was a good call out. So um, excellent. Yeah. Got a, got a good response to that. I think so we close all the blast doors and so that way we're physically constraining the intruders and so we can yep. just go from section to section and ideally pin them down yep. to where we can capture them. Then we can put them in the interrogation chamber to yep. uh, have this, have them spill their secrets. That's right. Yeah, it's a good idea. So lock, lock, down, lock down the Death Star, close all doors and access except for the the staff the emergency response team that we have going section to section to narrow down narrow them down um and and focus on capturing them and then it sounds like do we have anything left to do on the system sounds like the the one asset's gone i guess there's yep. we can lock sure down that... the user accounts we got the hardware out um we're running on the the backup systems um let's just restore the original systems, the primary Restore back systems. to original system, yeah. And then just double check for any other malicious activity and we should be good. Yep. All right, so we're going to close the blast doors. Lock down lock all, them, all lock sections. Down. Lock down, close all doors. I think it said it was doing a sector to sector search already. So, um, yeah. I don't know if yep. Um, oh, I heard, what's the, what are those noises? Who's making noise? Okay. Not the rebels. Yeah. <laughs> that was my daughter um, unstacking the dishwasher. <laughs> okay. Make sure all search. Who's it? Could, could, be the, could be those darn Ewoks down on uh, indoor. That's there. right. <laughs> Make sure all search teams um, have um, pictures of the uh you know suspected suspicious maintenance rebels folks. from the um video footage um what, what was the other thing have have uh let's see lockdown and then um david not david said uh have a team the forensics team start looking at the confiscated hardware looking at um what clues may be there because it may help us track people down it may help us understand where they're coming from etc and then check the tools that they, uh, if we find the tool, I don't know if we have the tools yet, but look for the tools. Uh, I guess they did leave tools in the, in the bay. So look at those for there's any information or indicators from other breaches. Cause there may be another piece of hardware or something that, that may be out there. That's not, uh, initiated yet. Yeah. Um, The breaches. Um, uh, a, a little bit tongue in cheek here, but um, fine tune the facial recognition search to 
known bad actors from earlier episodes in the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> this will be interesting. And we okay. should also probably alert um, uh, upper management that there's a breach going on. Let Lord Vader know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do a facial <laughs> recognition sure search not mine. to see if any of the um, suspected uh, rebels from the video match any known um, terrorists, known rebels. Yeah. Database. And then, um, well, what was the last one? What, what, what did you say before that? Uh, Notify Lord Vader of the. Oh yeah. Of the. If we ending. haven't already, we need to notify all senior officers, including Lord uh, Vader of the um, incident and response actions so far all right let's go with this one right <laughs> yeah somebody made a mention earlier that this is uh this is a better story than what disney writes now <laughs> and uh you know yeah with the narrative this is making a good story and with the narration and everything it's yeah no it's been fun yeah that's very cool all right so Cool. All right. So we'll let it read this to us. I, I really want to get the latency fixed on this so that it's pretty much immediate. I know how to do it. I just haven't done it yet. Ready to start reading the first sentence and then that it is goes on. Yeah. Yeah. I can. And bulkhead doors across the station are swiftly sealed, effectively putting the Death Star into full lockdown mode. No one is to enter or leave. This action ensures that any intruders already inside are contained within their current sectors, narrowing down the search area for the stormtrooper squads. The images of the suspects are extracted from the security footage and disseminated among the search teams. Each stormtrooper unit is given a hollow projector with the images preloaded, increasing the chances of recognition and apprehension of the suspects. A specialized forensics team takes possession of the confiscated remote access device. Their examination is meticulous, searching for traps, hidden data, or other hidden functionalities, such as time bomb scripts. They begin to reverse engineer the device to understand its communication protocols and uncover any other systems it might have compromised or interacted with. Facial recognition analysis comes back with matches. Several of the individuals observed in the footage are indeed known to the Imperial database as low-level operatives within the Rebel Alliance. This confirmation turns the search into a manhunt. These rebels are now high-priority targets. Simultaneously, a full briefing is compiled, containing all the actions, findings and current statuses of the incident. It is encrypted and relayed to all senior officers of the Death Star, as well as to Lord Vader, ensuring that the Empire's top command is aware of the situation. Although Lord Vader's presence is not on station, his informants guarantee the message will reach him promptly, allowing him to advise or intervene as he sees fit. With the Death Star on high alert, the search tightens, and the forensic analysis of the hardware begins. Your decisive steps have fortified the station, cornered the intruders, and ensured that leadership is fully abreast of the situation. With the Empire's might behind you, await the outcomes of these actions, or direct further commands, Commander. I think we, we await. I don't think there's anything else to do other than uh, see, wait until they find the... the, the the suspicious folks and get the results of, of the forensics on the, on the devices. Yeah. I think we yeah. wait a little bit and get ready for complete containment eradication, but I think it's a waiting game at the moment. Yep. So in a real life situation, um, often personnel fatigue, um, you know, so maybe a shift rotation here in the on the command desk and maintain a heightened sense of um, security uh, awareness. Yeah, might be a good uh, step. And that That's way, true. 
Uh, one another thing it did, yeah, coming, we didn't, that's probably where it all come. Yeah, we didn't get a sense of time that it took necessarily. So it kind of seemed like, oh, this took an hour, but then maybe it played out over 24 hours or right. 48 hours now. This long generation makes me nervous. <laughs> not, Might take a 10, 10 minute narration. Yeah, all right. Oh, we got some information. Come on. Start the reading. Doesn't it sound like Tarkin. Who does he sound like? He sounds like the dude from it does Superman 2. <laughs> Stand still, a silent waiting colossus. Time creeps by as the various teams execute their duties under your orders. Forensic analysis of confiscated hardware. The forensics team works tirelessly and discovers that the remote access device contains encryption algorithms unique to known rebel communications. It has multiple layers of obfuscation, but no additional sabotage mechanisms like time bombs are found within the device. It seems to have been a focused tool for the incursions into the Death Star systems. Stormtrooper search update. The search teams report back with significant findings. Two of the suspected rebels, recognized from the security footage, are cornered and detained in one of the lower level storage areas. Interrogation begins immediately, with the goal of uncovering the possible extent of their operations and the existence of any remaining collaborators aboard the station. Facial recognition search. The facial recognition search across the Imperial databases not only confirms the identity of the captured rebels, but links them to a specific cell known for advanced technological intrusions. Uh, this information easy. narrows down potential methods and tools that may have been used in the attempted sabotage, which in turn aids your cybersecurity team in defending against future incursions. Senior Officer, Briefing. The encrypted transmission sent to the senior officers and Lord Vader returns with acknowledgments. No direct orders are issued, implying trust in your current course of action and in your ability to manage the situation. Some officers offer additional tactical droids to assist with security if required. With the immediate threat contained and a clearer picture of the enemy's methods, the station slowly lifts the lockdown in controlled stages, careful not to disrupt the meticulous order you've established. Further debriefing will occur once all evidence is collected and suspects are interrogated. As the incident response approaches conclusion, and with key victories in hand, your final report bulges with crucial insights and a station now on higher alert against the insidious threat of the Rebel Alliance. Would you like to continue the exercise, analyze the scenario, or do you consider your mission objectives accomplished, Commander? I think considering we're at the top of the hour, um, I mean, this is a good, good I mission accomplished. Yeah, take out, the, take out the Rebels. <laughs> Start start blowing up planets again. <laughs> yep. Um, so let's uh, consider uh, this um, exercise completed. Um, and go ahead and report. give us the uh, final analysis and um, ooh can't spell anal is anal. Y S I S. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, final analysis and uh, report. Be sure to include in the um, report um, the final discovery of what the rebels were up to and what their goal was. In glowing words about the incident response team leaders. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and did Sam. any Wookiees arms get ripped off? <laughs> <laughs> no droids. Did Wookiees rip any droids uh, arms off? Uh, I'm not the droid you're looking for. <laughs> How uncivilized. Fire shot at Tatooine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what planet would you take out if you could in Star Wars? That's right. That's a good question. Yeah. Is Zendo still there? 
Mm-hmm. All right, so it's but, given us our wrap up report. Here we go. Um, all right. So it'll read that. That's good. Eighty-five. After it reads this. Yeah. What did we do wrong? We'll see. We'll let it. We'll let it read this to us, um, and then. I can also uh, download the transcript and download this report so I can keep that for safekeeping. Oh, that's cool. How it, uh, Analysis and reports. <laughs> Score 85 100. Executive summary. The exercise commenced with unexplained malfunctions across critical subsystems of the Death Star, suspected to be acts of sabotage by the Rebel Alliance. The cybersecurity team, under effective command, tackled this multidimensional threat by isolating affected systems, auditing and switching to standby systems, and locking down the station. Subsequent investigations led to the discovery of hardware used by rebels and the detainment of infiltrators. Communication channels were secured, suspected saboteurs were apprehended, and the station returned to a state of heightened security. The threat was contained with minimal operational disruption. Analysis Summary The threat was identified as a coordinated effort to infiltrate the Death Star's critical systems and destabilize the station, potentially as a precursor to further, more aggressive actions by the Rebel Alliance. The goal of the Rebel operatives was to weaken the Death Star's defences and cause disorder, potentially leading to opportunities for a larger-scale assault or to gather intelligence for the Rebel Alliance. Detailed cost breakdown, diagnostic efforts, forensic analysis and investigations, 23,000 credits, increased security patrols and operations, 15,000 credits, emergency shifts and personnel overtime, 8,000 credits, lost due to delayed operations during system switchover and lockdown, 67,000 credits, positive successful actions. Quick isolation and stabilization of compromised systems. Successful switchover to standby systems with integrity checks. Effective lockdown and search of the Death Star, leading to the capture of two rebels. Proactive communications and navigation sweep. Clear and controlled flow of information to prevent panic. Areas for improvement. Incident detection and response could be tightened to address threats more swiftly. Standby systems and integrity checks could be routine to ensure faster switchover in future incidents. Regular audit of user activity and hardware signatures to prevent similar incursions. Breakdown of score deductions. 15 points for reactive measures instead of proactively identifying threats, suggesting room for improvement in continuous monitoring and threat intelligence. Points lost for asking for advice will be consolidated here as five. Your team's response to this unconventional threat was both robust and strategic, optimizing each asset at your disposal to neutralize the threat with precision. Now, with newfound experience and insight, your cybersecurity team is even more formidable against the galactic scourge of rebellion. The Empire's might stands unyielded, your resolve unbroken. Excellent work, Commander. Now, um, so... Huzzah. There are things back in our original system design and in our system configurations where uh, we're working on trying to improve its accuracy in so in terms of don't grade us on a lack of systems in place, only grade us on the incident response. response itself. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so we're that working on that um, now. But that being said, if if one thing you can do, which we're not going to do here because it's already you know we're already um, at the top of the hour, but you could. Uh, not argue, but you could ask it for clarification on why did you ding us here? What do you mean here? And you can actually ask some follow-up questions and have a conversation with it afterwards for clarification on its findings and things like that. So, you know, it, it's not a, it's, it, there are still some things to tweak here and there, but I mean like this, you know, it literally just rolled out last week. So, uh, but I think it, uh, I think this was fun. Guys, any any yeah, comments? Really fun. Debrief comments? Yeah, no, I, I thought it was great. I really appreciate you putting it together. I think that's really exciting. Yeah, my only comment would be, yeah, it didn't, and this I think Peter was it was you know, not tracking like how much time is going by. So I think that would be a really interesting kind of yeah. You yeah, we just didn't do in. that. 
Yeah, yeah you can tell it to track how much time passes right. and how much time goes by. Again, because we're trying to do this in just an hour uh, for sure. live streaming, we just we kind of kept it high level and um, sure. and I kept the detail a little bit abstracted. But yeah, you could dig down as deep as you want, and um, you can, you know, you can. There, there's lots of things you can do to increase the level of detail, um, and I think so. You know, the next one we do next week, we'll probably do a more realistic one. Uh, but I wanted to kick off with something pretty fun to start with. But we'll alternate um, on our Tabletop Tuesdays. We'll go back and forth between doing um, fantasy, entertainment, sci-fi versus um, the uh, more realistic situations that I think people are going to want to see as well. Yeah, um, that was very cool. Yeah, it was great. Um I think the the value of the tabletop exercise and experiential learning is, you know, often cybersecurity awareness training gets very, you know, same old, same old over and over again. And this you get a lot of engagement and a lot of banter across your team and a lot of cultural um, pinning down of the cybersecurity practices within your organisation. So um, making it fun and interactive and engaging like this is a, is a very effective way of um, growing your team. Yeah, and I, yeah. so we've run these with customers before using Auto Tabletop. And what's interesting is, you know, instead of doing an annual one, instead of doing this, um, you know, one long one, uh, either four uh, hours long or, or doing over a few days, we did several little one hour, two hour ones over the course of two or three days. Um, and you can see noticeable improvement from what they learned from the first one versus like the fourth or fifth one a couple yeah. days later. Um, they've used what they learned so you can see noticeable improvement one thing is uh alex did ask you know how did how did we guys ask or how, how did you guys ask for uh advice i agree it, it says that we asked for advice i don't remember that you know we could ask it you know you could go back and say wait when did i ask for advice so there's still some tweaking and it's analysis that that we're sure. working on but um you know but like i said it will reason with you. You can ask it questions. You can be like, wait, and you can have it read to the report and everything like that. So, but, but yeah. the use case here, but obviously doing normal tabletops for, a, you know, your, your cybersecurity awareness, that kind of thing, but using it as a training opportunity to, to what he just talked about, right. Is, is it's a way that you can have this be a fun activity, almost a team building activity while at the same time you're enhancing your cyber understanding, right? So you can expand this to beyond just your cyber response team to your normal, all everyone right so it's really helping people to understand what happens in a cyber incident and and you make it fun so it doesn't feel like that normal training that that's boring and i've got to click through and i got to spend this time on it it can be something that can be more and there's still value for the company um because of awareness and you could you could arrange this yeah. around fishing or, or whatever those experience you know the the use cases you want to be um that you're that you're struggling with your organization so i see a lot of opportunity for this for organizations to use this in a lot of different you ways yeah, yeah and this is all the settings kidding. right here we had yeah. we literally just had a prompt uh here um and we gave it the, the information everything else was left blank and just right. using the system defaults that it's built into the system that's right. it that's how we configure this and then right. you can upload files you can export this as a as a, as a scenario template that's right. how simple it is and then like the voice settings are just here you just you just set up the voice boom and it goes um yeah any other i think somebody was going to say something Mike was going to say something. I was going to, yeah, no, I think it's great, and uh, I think just the other point is, I mean, it does it all for you. Yeah. Right? So it's and the nice thing, yeah, you can have a a fun exercise or a more realistic exercise, which I still sure. think would be still fun to go through those as well. Yep. And people could even do them on their own, mm -hmm. and probably you know when they're maybe they don't want to like maybe they feel uncomfortable doing it right in the group, you know, so they get yeah. some practice before they get in front of, of other people. I actually signed up for a threat gen account like at right before the holidays. And I didn't have a chance to use it because I was doing my master's thesis. But right. mm. so I was like, I was coming in cold because I was like, maybe I should practice because I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> yep. So you probably signed up for the red versus blue. This is separate. The auto tabletop is a separate thing. But um, yeah, well, I got the email yeah. that I looked like you added it in. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. But, yeah, I think I yeah, I think I might have. You're like, or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, well, I remember. So there are certain there are certain um, 
contacts that I have and there's certain industry professionals that I want to put this in front of to evaluate. And I'm, I'm 99% sure that I was the one who activated yours um, as an evaluator. Um, oh, gotcha. But yeah, I appreciate that. The, yeah, um, right. I'll play with it more a lot for sure. Yeah. By the way, um, somebody was asking, what's the next sci-fi one going to be? Oh, absolutely. Stargate command. Stargate command is definitely going to be the, the next sci-fi, you know, and here's That'd the interesting cool. thing. I don't know anything about Battlestar Galactica, and I think that some oh. people would like to see that oh. one as well. All right, I have to go now. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That was my, my wife's introduction into sci-fi, um, and she loved it. So the 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 last series. Yes. Yeah. With almost one. and yep. oh. very cool. Cool. Um, all right. Well, guys, thanks for joining us. Everybody in the audience, yeah, thank thanks you. for joining us. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and follow us to for, for every Tuesday. We'll be doing these. Um, every Tuesday on Tabletop Tuesdays, same time, uh, same same Tuesdays, same bat time, and same bat channel. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so check us out for the next one for next Tuesday. If you would like to be a part of our panel and volunteer, just let me know. And um, definitely want to have more people to come on and play along with us. So, and you can find us at threatgen.com also if you're interested in this. And with that, we'll end this one. Take care, everybody. See you next Thanks, time. Uh-huh. <laughs>